All right, this is new starter. This is the old starter. Unpackage, see what it looks like. I do know it's going to be a little different. I didn't buy the direct OEM replacement, mainly because it cost 160 more dollars than this one. And this old one here, I don't have it. I don't have all the components. I'm missing the mounting hardware here. But the bolt pattern is going to look the same. One thing you probably notice right away is this one has the solenoid on top, mounted to the cylinder. The old one does not have the solenoid mounted on it. It actually was a manually actuated starter. I'll show you that right here. And so we're going to have to re rewire this one a little bit, a little differently than how this one was set up. But first we got to, got to finish taking the mounting bracket off for this starter over on the tractor. Let's get to it. We have to take all this off right here. We'll take the four bolts off, three bolts here, and mount that new one right here in its place. Then we'll work on the wire. I think that does something to hold this actuator in. We're going to have to take that off anyway. The whole starter housing should pull out. Leave that drop down there. We could probably plant a new hay field with all this grass seed that's on the track. It does line up perfect. Okay, what I have on my tractor, the current setup, I believe this is an aftermarket switch, but that's just a push button switch. Again, that was the old engager. I don't know if this is factory as well, this starter solenoid here, but it's mounted here. They wired in the back side, the lead there on the back comes from the battery. Then they also have one of these yellow wires comes from the battery as well. It's running to that switch and then it comes back from that switch on this leg right here, ties in here. And then that will send the power here. And from here, this run ran to the old starter and bolted onto the starter. We've got to do this a little differently since this solenoid is right here, essentially. Rather, we can just bypass this. I won't need this anymore. So I'll have to make my push button wires a little longer so that that way they can land on this solenoid back here. But I've got my, I'm going to have my battery power coming from here. Once the solenoid clicks over, it should have power from here to here. should turn the starter over. I guess this is just another ground down here. So far I have rerouted the battery cable from the positive on the battery to right here. You're looking at the solenoid from the end. This is where that battery cable just mentioned comes to. And then I need to figure out which one of these to hook to. Cut these ring terminals off. Put some butt connectors there. All right, I need a hot to go to that switch, run through that switch, and then go to the starter solenoid. So I'm going to connect this right here on the positive terminal 
this battery cable came with that extra little 12 gauge wire to do that with. All right, let's trace down the wires one more time. This red wire right here comes from the battery, the positive battery terminal. Runs down here, goes up here to this switch. Then when I push the switch in, it closes the circuit, runs back down this yellow wire to where that black is right there. Comes in, that black wire lands on this small post, the top post on the back side there. And then whenever you give that power, that then closes this circuit here. It sends electricity across here and actually spins the starter, kicks the Bendix in at the same time. Try to just jump these out with a pair of pliers and it would only spin the starter. It would not kick that Bendix in. So I figured out which one of them terminals on the back would actually operate that Bendix. Cause I gotta have the Bendix kicked in and I've got to have the starter turning. Done all that, now let's see if we can get her to turn over. Gauge is in neutral. Here we go. Ah! 